was brought up in a Hindu tradition and as I grew up I knew like I was totally different from other kids because I suffered from epileptic seizures and I used to get bullied at school and my childhood was horrifying because I grew up seeing my dad hitting my mom, torturing her, burning her with cigarettes and I still remember every night, every evening, we, me, mum and my brother used to get scared thinking that what will my dad come and do to us because he used to be so drunk. My dad was not only an alcoholic but he was also a drug addict and a womanizer. So there's this one day my mom got to know that he has a relationship with another woman and we left home. And since then it's been only me, my mom and my brother. So from my fifth standard, I started living in my grandmom's place. And all our family member despised us and didn't treat us well. And since we had a very bad financial crisis, mom took up a job in abroad to support us. And growing up in my grandma's place was not that easy because she also ill-treated us. And I still remember a situation where like, I had my 10th board exams and she insisted me to do the household work and didn't allow me to study. And with a lot of difficulty, I, I passed my 10th and this time I decided that I'm going to unite my mom and dad. So I called my mom to my dad's place without his knowledge and uh, this didn't go well because my dad was so furious he called the cops and gave a complaint against my mum and he hit me black and blue and I started bleeding from my ears and he chased me out of the house and that was the last time I spoke to my dad and I totally lost contact with him till date and I hated him and then I joined my college so once I begin my college I met this boy and he proposed to me and he said that he'll take care of me and at that moment, I felt like he was the right one for me. And during that relationship period, the, the extent of control what he had over my life was like, I didn't even realize it. He stopped me from all the social networks. He didn't allow me to talk to my friends. He didn't even allow me to talk to my family members. And I was so isolated and still I thought he's the right one for me. And uh, even though my mom opposed me, from being in relationship with this guy, I still continued because I thought he's my world. And this is one day, this girl comes up to me and she tells that this guy sexually misbehaved with this girl and that broke my heart. I was being so loyal, I was being so sincere to this person and uh, in, at the end of the second or third year, she comes and tells me this guy sexually misbehaved with me. And I was shattered. The hurt and the disappointment was so huge in my life that I started getting into alcohol, alcohol, smoking, pornography, uh, so that I could divert my pain. And at this period of time, I was sexually abused by an elderly person who was my aunt's uh, friend. And uh, I had a lot of anger in me. And I, if somebody would did something bad to me, I used to thrash them on roads. Even if it was boy or girl or an elderly person, I used to literally hit them and thrash them on road. And as days passed by, there was one of my friends who introduced me to a cult called as the Illuminati. So people who don't know about it, it's just called as Freemasonry. And they told me, God is not real and religion will not help me. And he told me that if at all I get into this cult, I'm going to get name, fame and money. And that was the right thing what I wanted at that time. And I, I, I joined the team, I joined that cult. And I also did a research and I found out there are a lot of celebrities who follow this cult. And I also, I also got a tattoo which symbolizes uh, their cult in, on my forearm. And uh, I used to download Lucifer's pictures in my phone and I used to keep it. And before I could ado uh, attend their regular meetings, one of my classmates named Ebenezer invited me for a Bible study at Radiant School. And I still remember John Alexander was, pre uh, was teaching and I was sitting in the last row and mocking at him. And after the, after the Bible study, he called me. And I spoke to him for the first time and when he prayed for me, I experienced God's presence for the first time. And that shook me really. And God spoke to me telling that, no, whatever happened in my life in a series, with, I didn't even know who John Sir was. God's presence was so much that he started telling me what happened in my life from my childhood till date. And he told me that I was in a relationship which was very dangerous and would destroy me. And that was happening in my life. And as soon as the minute John sir prayed for me, like, you know, the previous boy who used to call me like 150 times and harass me on phone stopped immediately then and there. And that shook me. And I knew that 
there is something supernatural happening and god delivered me from this relationship and after accepting jesus as my savior i knew somebody loved me and nobody can love me like the way how god loved me and after the encounter with god weekend god delivered me from smoking drinking and pornography and now i know that god is my heavenly father and through god's love i was able to for- forgive my father and my grandmother and i started to love people and i want to tell people that god's love is real and today i'm a part of living free team and i want to tell people that what miracles god has done in my life like i was like such a broken person and god has molded me today and i'm standing and testifying without shame because i know that i'm not the product of my past but i'm the product of the cross i want to end my testimony telling you guys that no jesus is a on time god he he will never be early or he'll never be too late he will be on time and he'll see to that you are rescued